Into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears. Oh, well, I tune into my TV show. No better way, I gotta get myself into gear. Let's go. Oh, and I feel good today. With my wake up in the morning espresso. And I feel good today. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, yes. Oh, good. yes. <laughs> you rises. It's 7 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. It's your feel-good breakfast show. We're live, large, and in charge, baby. It's day 69. It is day 69 of a brand new level of lockdown, level 3 across <laughs> South Africa. Hopefully, you're making the most of it, making the most of that ability to step out during the day at most hours till, what, 6 p.m., 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. to exercise. I may be wrong about the 8 p.m. So more hours to exercise, and hopefully, you're able to, uh, to do a lot more things than you were able to in previous levels. We've got a fantastic show lined up this morning. We do. It is World Infertility Awareness Month. Yep. We're going to be uh, delving in on that conversation with a gynecologist a bit later on. So you want to make sure that you uh, stay tuned for that very, very important and insightful interview and a chat we're going to be having there. Absolutely. And of course, if you missed out on all of the action of Tropical Island of Treasure, the grand finale, which concluded last night, you can catch the repeat this coming Saturday at 8 p.m. But it was absolutely amazing. Team well, Cool Red, we all know right, right now, of course, yeah. are the winners. A million Rand richer, each yeah. of them. And they spoke to us yesterday about uh, what they're going to do with the money that they oh. won, um, absolute golden generous hearts and uh, the money that's going to go and benefit so many people out there in their um, you know communities out yeah. there so thank you very much Love to that. every one of you who tuned into Tropic Island of Treasure Curacao every single week and made the journey as memorable as it was. Not memorable is DJ oh, me. My word. I don't oh. know what I'm gonna do with my cheeses now. We, me, me and Kat kind of had this thing. It was Tropical Tuesdays, but listen, there was so much drama. But Team Red won! Yeah! Yay! It was amazing! Woo! Uh, <laughs> congratulations to Trevor and to Nadia and to the entire production of Tropical, because mm. I mean it was an amazing season this year. We saw drama, we saw tears, we saw fun, we saw laughter. But there were so many highs and so many lows. But we want to know what has been the high point for this season for, for, for you. Let us know and I Social media, Espresso Morning Show, SABC3. What has been that highlight for you? Oh, there's so many memorable moments and so much magic in the show. Yeah. But one thing that stood out for me, especially, was seeing Trevor and Nadia when they had that moment of uh, deciding whether you wanted to stay with your partner or not. And uh, he stuck through with that loyalty and he, st and he chose Nadia. And Kind of worked in the end, so loyalty. Definitely it's so funny one for me. how you are hyping up the winners only because they won a million rand. I don't know, maybe they are <laughs> friends, maybe they're not. I want we, some money. <laughs> we don't know, but guys, let's get on with the order of the day and check into those news headlines with Kat. We're well, just after seven o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Let's take a look at those news headlines. On the national news front, the High Court in Pretoria yesterday declared Level 3 and 4 lockdown regulations to be unconstitutional and invalid. It has, however, suspended the declaration for two weeks, meaning that Level 3 laws remain in operation for now. The court directed members of the National Coronavirus Command Council to amend the regulations and align them with the Bill of Rights. The, reg the regulation pertaining to the sale of tobacco was not included in the ruling because other courts would be dealing with it in the future. Cooperative Governance Minister Dr. Nkosazana Zamini Zuma was ordered to pay the legal costs. The KwaZulu Natal Health Department says it will employ an additional 3,000 healthcare workers to deal with the expected increase in COVID 19 cases as the national lockdown is eased. Provincial Health MEC Nomagugu Simelani Zulu visited the Clarewood Hospital in Durban yesterday and said the newly refurbished facility has an additional 154 beds for isolation cases and 40 for patients who need to be quarantined. Meanwhile, the number of COVID-19 cases in South Africa has increased by about 4% in the past 24 hours to 35,812 with 755 deaths. On the international news front, the death of George Floyd, which triggered widespread protests across the U.S., has been declared a homicide in an official post-mortem examination. The 46-year-old suffered a cardiac arrest while being restrained by Minneapolis police, the report found. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump has been widely criticized for using the St. John's Episcopal Church as a backdrop for a photo shoot with a Bible in his hand. One priest tweeted, The Bible is not a prop. A church is not a photo op. Religion is not a political tool. God is not your plaything. 
Now, Uganda will lose about $1.6 billion a year in earnings from tourism as visitors stay away due to the impact of the coronavirus, President Yoweri Museveni said yesterday. Tourism is one of Uganda's economic mainstays as the East African country attracts visitors to see a range of game as well as the mountain gorillas in the southwest of the country. The International Monetary Fund has said that Uganda's tourism earnings were expected to fall by 54% in this fiscal year. The country has so far recorded 458 cases of COVID-19 with no deaths reported. And now news of a Kenyan WizKids ingenious invention. A nine-year-old Kenyan boy who made a wooden hand-washing machine to help curb the spread of coronavirus has been awarded his country's Presidential Order of Service Award. Stephen Wa Wamukota's ingenious invention allows a user to tip a bucket of water using a, a foot pedal to avoid touching surfaces to reduce infections. Now, he came up with the idea after learning on TV about ways of, to prevent catching the virus. His dad, James, said he had bought some pieces of wood to make a window frame, but when he came back home after work one day, he found that Stephen had made the clever machine. Now, he posted his son's invention on Facebook and was surprised how quickly it was shared. And after receiving the award, a beaming Stephen told the media that he wanted to be an engineer when he grows up and that the county governor had promised to give him a scholarship. A bright young mind, certainly, for a promising future there. And now taking a quick glimpse into the world of entertainment this morning, multiple outlets have reported that American boxer Floyd Mayweather has reached out directly to the family of George Floyd, offering to pay for his funeral costs. They've accepted his offer for the occasion, which is set to take place next Tuesday in George's hometown of Houston, Texas. Mayweather will also cover the costs of George's memorial services in Minnesota tomorrow, his birth town of North Carolina in, on Saturday, as well as a fourth location that has yet to be determined. A check for $88,500, a little over 1.5 million rand, has been made to a Houston Memorial Planning Center. Mayweather is no stranger to generous acts of kindness, having previously paid for the 2011 funeral of fellow boxer Gennaro Hernandez, who died at the age of 45 from a rare form of muscular cancer. The pair had fought in 1998 for the WBC featherweight title, which Mayweather won by technical knockout, resulting in his first world title. Well, that's the news at 7 o'clock. We'll have another bulletin for you at 8 o'clock right now. Here's a first look at the weather. Thank you so much, Kat. Happy Wednesday to all of you. We ask you to send in your sunrise pictures this morning on this Wednesday. Now, Pat Sinkle wishes us a happy hump day with this stunning sunrise picture from Montclair in Durban. Montclair can expect mostly cloudy conditions today, reaching a maximum temperature of 26 degrees. Another one came through from Rhoda Bully, sent through this breathtaking sunrise picture of a pink and gray sky all the way from Sydney, Australia. Now, Sydney can expect partly sunny conditions today with a high of 16 degrees. Rhoda says the lockdown regulations have been easing on that side of the world with restaurants and coffee shops opening for business but she adds that they are still protecting themselves as sanitizers have been placed everywhere. Thank you for giving us an update on life in lockdown in Australia Rhoda and thank you to both you and Pat for sending through your sunrise pictures. We hope you have an awesome start to the day. Now cool and fine conditions can be expected across the country today starting off with Polokwane. Plenty of sunshine can be seen for Polokwane with a low of 5 peaking at 24 degrees. For you, Umbumbela, your range is 9 to 28 degrees. And then hazy sunshine with a light north northerly breeze of 6 kilometers per hour. Expected for Pretoria with a minimum temperature of 8, peaking at 24 degrees. Johannesburg, 7 to 23. Mahikeng, 6 to 26. And then mostly sunny conditions expected for Klerkstorp with a low of 2 peaking at 24 degrees. Sun through some high clouds for you. Kimberley today with a low of 5 and a high of 24 and the coolest start of the day can be found in Bloemfontein ranging from 0 to 23 degrees. If you do find yourself in Richards Bay your low is 17 with a high of 29, Peter Maritzburg 10 28 and then if you do find yourself in South Africa's playground at Durban partly cloudy conditions can be seen ranging from 19 to 26 degrees. Ntata 10 26 and then a gentle southwesterly breeze of 18 kilometers Kilometers per hour expected for you East London with a minimum temperature of 14 and a maximum of 23. Craddock 625, Port Elizabeth 1321 and then mostly cloudy conditions for you George ranging from 10 to 18 degrees. 
A light northwesterly breeze of 9 km per hour expected for you, Sutherland, with a low of 7 and a high of 19. For the Mother City, Cape Town, your range is 10 to 19 degrees. And then cool conditions can be expected for Worcester, uh, ranging from 10 to 20. And then last but definitely not least, Uppington, your range is 9 to 28 degrees. Now, being on lockdown does not mean we can't get to see this beautiful country that we live in. So please do send us a picture or video of your town and we could show it live on the show. Also, make sure to include a picture of yourself and why you love your town so much but of course whatever the weather wherever you find yourself happy hump day to all of you pharma dynamics effective affordable health care Well, happy hump day indeed, everybody. Thank you very much, Jamie Lee, for that look at the weather and the temperatures across the country. Now, the past week has been so busy. We've seen so many people in solidarity with those who have been protesting uh, police brutality in the United States. So much action around that. And this, of course, in the wake of uh, the death of George Floyd in police brutality. Uh, and now we know that people often turn to former Miss, uh, or rather former First Lady, Miss uh, Michelle Obama, for words of comfort and wisdom in times of crisis like now. Uh, and she stands vocally and passionately for the disenfranchised, uh, particularly those in, in the black communities and women. And speaking on how we can address racism, this is what she had to say. Yeah, I absolutely love this quote. Tubbs. Now she says it's up to all of us, black, white, everyone, no matter how well-meaning we think we might be, to to do the honest, uncomfortable work of rooting it out. It starts with self-examination and listening to those whose lives are different from our own. It ends with justice, compassion, and empathy that manifests in our lives and on our streets. Oh, uh, I yeah. think it speaks so truly to the empathy that we need to have in this current moment. Mm. It's not enough to just think you know. You really need to spend the time finding out and actually serving that justice that has been laid out throughout these years. So mm. important, take it. Run with it, as you would say, Tubbs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and have a love and a respect for human life. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Win while watching the Tropical Island of Treasure finale this week on Tuesday and the repeat on Saturday with your favorite Tropica in hand. All you have to do is take a picture and post on Twitter with hashtag Tropica or on the Tropica Facebook page. Post a selfie with you watching or of yourself dressed up supporting your favorite team or simply just your Tropica bottle to stand a chance of winning your share of data and cash prizes. So go on and get your Tropica, watch the epic finale show, hashtag Tropica, and you could win smooth prizes. It's my feel-good birthday show. Happy birthday, a very happy, happy. birthday to you. Hey. Yes, happy Wednesday, happy hump day, and also happy birthday, because it is that time of the day when we take the time to just, you know, bring you closer and say happy birthday, because it is your special day. And we've got a, we've got some pretty cool messages coming through. Oh, yes, we do. We got a video sent in by Tuli Celia. This one is for Amathe, because it's uh, Amathe's first birthday today. Take a look at this. Happy birthday to you. 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 Happy birthday to you.
my goodness, that is so cute. Oh, it is so cute. I think this is the first time I've seen uh, a first uh, birthday celebration with a cake in front of the uh, the birthday girl or birthday boy where it's not being punched straight into. Oh. Because by the time it's done, so that, that, that cake was some, some pretty good is control. all over. Yeah, no, she's yeah. disciplined. Happy birthday, Amethe. <laughs> but also, happy birthday to my wife, Tanya. The message reads, may you be blessed more. Have an awesome day. Lots of love from your husband, Garth, and your kids, Robin, Reese, and Riley. Happy birthday, Tanya. And of course, another birthday message coming through for Joshua saying, uh, we're sending out a special birthday wish to our nephew, Joshua Naidu, who is turning seven years old today. A very happy birthday to you, Joshi. We pray that you receive God's richest blessings upon you today and always. Love and miss you. And this is from Auntie Taz, Uncle Morgs, and cousin Sky, uh, Sky Pele. Oh, beautiful. Then it's Tebuho's birthday. Tebuho turns 37 today. Happy birthday, Tebuho. Uh, this year might be a bit of a mess, but be sure to seize every moment and conquer every challenge that comes your way. I know that the sky is not the limit when it comes to you. This is from Sue and your son, Antonio. Happy birthday, Debza. Zodwa, it's your birthday as well. It says, I wish my beautiful aunt Zodwa Blackie a happy 30th birthday. Hey, welcome to the 30s, Zodwa. I uh, <laughs> wish you all the best on your special day and future. We love you. This is from Sumisa Plaki and uh, Ntomkolo Plaki. Happy birthday, Mama. All righty. And then a message uh, from that says, Brinsley Johannes, uh, we would love to wish Brinsley Johannes the biggest 60th birthday. Uh, thank you for all of the hard work, the sacrifices that you've done and love that you've given over the years. You are one incredible human being and we pray that God continues to bless you with great health and amazing wealth. And this is from your wife, Ingrid, your children, Jody and Lizelle, Bronwyn and Enrico and Igar and all the grandchildren as well. Uh, we love you very much. This is from the Johannes family as well as the Albertain family. I believe so, I believe yeah. so. Happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Stunning, Renan. Really. Nah, okay, well, listen, if you have a loved one celebrating their birthday uh, soon, please do share it with us. We want to celebrate it here on the show. We want to celebrate them. Uh, send us a video. Maybe uh, switch it up and sing them uh, their favorite song on their birthday and send it to 071-640-6551. Or you can email us, birthdays, at cadova.tv. But hey, if it's your birthday today, from all of us here to you, happy birthday. What song would you sing for me? Yo... You're the coffee that I need in the morning. That's my favorite song. You're the you know? sunshine when it's rainy outside. <laughs> Won't you give yourself to me? She's no stranger give to this yourself. special show and family. The very talented singer-songwriter Amy Jones has been teasing us with a brand new single titled Dance On My Own. And finally, it is here. Take a look at this. So I, I just want to dance on my own. Just want to dance on my own. I am completely blown away by this. This morning, we get to sit down exclusively with this 27-year-old songstress from Paul as she tells us more about her latest project. Good morning, beautiful human. Good morning, Jamie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Let me start off by saying congratulations on your brand new single, Dance On My Own. Listen, take us through the concept behind the song. Uh, thank you so much. Well, um... Basically, the song I wrote in my bedroom, and it's about someone, he or she, you know, going through a difficult time, and to break away from someone or something, and to actually finally realize that it's actually okay to dance by yourself on your own, you know, and there's a season and time for everything, and sometimes loneliness can bring you down, but in this case, it's just an encouragement, you know, to break free from whatever's holding you back, and to dance on your own, you know, dance like no one's watching. And um, the producer actually can't contacted me via Instagram. I've never met him in my life. He actually was on Expresso as well. He was on Presenter Search. Um, Rashen, Rashen Pillay, he's a great guy. And um, we got together and that's how the song came about, Dance on My Own. That is so beautiful, hitting all the feels. Adele, is that you? Listen, you're making me miss my ex now, but what has the process been like doing <laughs> such a product um, and a project on your own from writing the new music and then even collabing with this producer and all this during a national lockdown? I recorded it in studio here in Cape Town before lockdown and I wrote the song actually also before lockdown. So um, everything just got together with the mixing and mastering via um, phone, 
WhatsApp, voice notes, you know, video calling as well. Just also making sure that everyone's on the same page when it comes to time when a song should be out. I love that you've been teasing us with new music, hair goals, body goals as well. Also been encouraging your followers to stay healthy and active with your Wednesday workout posted on your social media. You know, why was it so important for you to encourage people to stay fit and active, especially during this time? I used to study dietetics. Um, I'm not sure if you know that, but that's also part of um, my history. Like I used to study dietetics before I became like a singer. So I am very focused on staying healthy, and just to also feel better. You know, there was a time where I wasn't active at all and I felt very like lazy and I felt, you know, you feel a little bit older, you know, but now like I'm 27, but I feel like I'm 21, <laughs> forever 21. And um, your metabolic age also um, decreases, which is kind of cool. You know, the younger you are, the better. So it's kind of cool. And I think it's important even in this time, you know, to keep, a healthy, active lifestyle because it just makes you feel so much better. So that's why I believe people should stay active and not just, you know, get lazy at all because, no. Hmm. Listen, all I'm saying is when we get to stage one, me and you are hitting the gym together. You're going to give me some of that because mama needs to get her weight snatched back right up, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Love it. But of course, we all want to know where can we get our hands on this brand new single? Ah, oh, you can get it on Google Play, iTunes, it's on YouTube as well, Tubity as well, Visa, it's like everywhere. So um, check it out from there and also follow me on my socials, Amy Jones 04 and also on my fan page, Amy Jones on Facebook. So on all those leading platforms, but uh, of course we want to know what else can we expect from Amy Jones for the rest of 2020? Ooh, um, definitely another music video, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited um, to share that one with you. It's going to be pretty special, also something that I've been working on during lockdown, and I think people will really love it, and um, yeah, maybe even another song, who knows? <laughs> Exclusively to Expresso Morning Show right here, everybody. Amy Jones, thank you so much for your time this morning. We wish you all of the best for the rest of 2020. Uh, thank you so much, Jamie. Remember to catch her brand new single on all digital platforms and you could soon be jamming to dance on my own from the comfort of your own home. Stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show as Amy will be joining our very own Ryle for today's Wednesday workout. You don't want to miss it. Now, whether she is singing, performing, or writing her latest hit song, Amy Jones makes fitness a priority. And now, during the national lockdown, she's been sharing her Wednesday workouts on her social media platforms, encouraging her fans to join in and stay fit and healthy. And since it's Wednesday today, we thought Amy could take us through her hashtag Wednesday workout live here on Expresso. Amy, how are you doing and what are we doing today? Okay, so today we'll be doing a little bit of legs, a little bit of abs. So the first exercise that I love doing is sumo squats. You know what that is, right? Can yes, we try it's it? a favorite. We haven't actually done it on the show yet, so I can't wait to show everybody. Let's begin. Okay, cool. So you have your, your legs wide, like a nice and wide, with your knees and your toes pointing outward. Then you're going to squat down as low as you can. 
All right, you, you guys. Do that for 30 seconds. If you guys didn't Here catch we that, we're doing a sumo squat, so making sure that you're getting your feet nice and wide, a lot wider than normal shoulder width. And then you're also gonna have your toes and your knees facing towards the outside. And as you can see, Amy, she is smashing this workout with perfect form. We're going all the way down to 90, 30 seconds of squatting, and then I think we're gonna move over to that next exercise. Amy, my glutes are burning. Is that the right feel? That is the right feel, and when you come up, squeeze your bum. <laughs> And I'm squeezing the glute, getting that extra bit of stimulation. I'm feeling it over here. Getting nice and warm, getting nice and sweaty. Where would we move over from this exercise? Okay, so from there, we're gonna do 30 seconds jumping jacks. All right, All right getting nice and sweaty. To get the heart rate up. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready, let's do it. Here we go. All right, guys, we're doing jumping jacks. 30 seconds, getting nice and sweaty, getting nice and hot. See if you can match that form. Amy Jones is killing it. I see where she gets that performance fitness. And we are going for a total of 30 seconds in total, making sure you get your arms nice and high above your head. Throw some energy into it. Throw some gears into it and come join myself. Woo. And Amy shaking and baking. We're on our second exercise of this full body complex. Amy, I'm feeling it, girl. How are you doing on your side? I'm feeling good, eh? Feeling good. Come on. Too, too easy for you, clearly. <laughs> All right, well, once we're done with our jumping jacks, we're moving over to that third exercise, I hope. What is next? Okay, so what's next is curtsy lunges, one of the base exercises that I love doing. And it helps with the hips, the glutes. So what you're going to do is you're going to cross your leg backward, and you're going to have your lower leg, the back leg, touch the floor, and the front leg like you as if you're gonna sit on a chair. You're gonna move all the way down and up. Then you're gonna alternate legs, other side, for 30 seconds. You have it? I think I got it, Amy. I'm just trying to concentrate and make sure that I do have it. And I'm feeling all sorts of feelings here. The quads, the hamstring, the glutes, even the ankle and the calf are working here. I'm sure that's correct, right? Very, very good. So Amy, while we're busy with this one, I have to ask you, being a singer and a performer, why do you do this type of work when you're training? I mean, being a singer, does it help you at all? Uh, this really, really helps as well for me when I perform. I think uh, the fitter you are, the longer you can sing, and also um, the better you feel. Because after a show, I find that I can do 45 minutes to an hour and even more now being fitter, and I can also sing for longer and you feel so much better after a show as well. It's oh, very good. Helps absolutely a lot. Absolutely love that. So you have no excuse whether an athlete, a performer, or even a chef, it doesn't matter. You can always benefit from some exercise and getting your health up to scratch. And I think we've got one more exercise that Amy's going to bless us with to complete this incredible, high-performing singer workout. <laughs> so where do we go from here? Okay, so the last one is the abs. I know not many people like doing abs. But it's only going to take, we're going to do 15 reps, and you can repeat it at home many times as you like. But we're going to do the normal sit-ups. Are you ready? I'm ready, and I think everyone in the studio is as well. We love working our core, working our abs, especially with all the beautiful food that we have in the kitchen. So this is an important one for us. <laughs> so we're going to do 15 reps. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. 15 reps, we're doing some sit-ups, guys. We're crunching and we're working those abs. You can see Amy is just so flawless at this already. She's a seasoned performer, as you can imagine. And this is really gonna help you, I'm sure, with the diaphragm, with seeing, getting your conditioning and getting your core together so you've got that perfect form when you are performing and giving the world your best. Amy, I am feeling my abs on fire. I'm feeling like I'm performance ready. Uh, I think I'm ready for the stage. And man, I cannot imagine how well and how much energy you can produce, especially being able to complete a workout like this. So thank you so much for sharing this and all your knowledge. And yeah, I wish you so, so, so much success for the rest of your year to come. And we'll be listening to your single quite a bit this year. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, eh? Well, that's a fantastic workout to start off the day. Now that you've burned all of those calories, it's time, it's time for some delicious comfort food. Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. 
Now the winter chills are in the air and it is officially soup season and we're inspired by Lutfia Gabir's chicken and corn soup recipe from the hashtag love clover competition packed with goodness and flavor and nutrition. It's a bowl of creamy comfort and she says that this is her family's favorite soup and uh, I, it's fair to say we can vouch for her too but we're about to show you how to make it. Uh, there's nothing more comforting than, look at this, just absolutely beautiful, warm, delicious. It looks amazing. Nicole, I can't wait to get started on this recipe especially because there couldn't be a better time to be making soups right exactly. now exactly soups is the, the perfect thing during winter it's just like that bowl of comfort like yeah. you said it is just you can't go wrong with this and i love her recipe because it is filled it almost reminds me of a chowder because it oh. came out a little bit thicker than a soup so yes. if you do want a, if you like a thick soup like our cameraman pete said he loves a thick soup so yeah. he didn't even want me to add more milk and i was like <laughs> then we're doing chowder yeah. not soup so i, I didn't know peter calls the shots here <laughs> <laughs> so we've just got some onion frying in our pot over here with some butter yeah and then we're going to add our chicken you can add cooked chicken or raw chicken i okay. like to add the chicken in with the onions just to build up that beautiful flavor and brown yes, it all. Yes, 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 yes. Because the, the longer that the ingredients interact with each other in the pot, the more there's a kind of transfusion of flavors that goes around. Exactly, right? yeah. Okay. They kind of just like marry each other and they can't get divorced after that. So it's just, <laughs> it's just that. That is it. What? <laughs> <laughs> food is like, oh, food word. is a story. That's what I love I love about. that. That's very cool, <laughs> very cool. Okay, so we've got some spring onion in here as well with uh -huh. your normal onion. I just chopped up one. Yeah. And you're gonna fry that off. Goodness. And again with some corn. I've used mm. a tin corn. You could use frozen corn or fresh off the cob. I mm -hmm. would use two, if you're using off the cob, just cut it yeah. off. Or maybe even if you wanted to, could you, could you, question, um, have corn on the cob? Maybe those, those smaller little bits? Oh, the little baby corn. The little baby corn. Yeah. Or, no, no, not the baby corn, but like corn on the cob but that you've just cut up into, into smaller quarters. segments. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then have that cook in there. You have the totally. flavor kind of also marry into the family. Yes. And then afterwards, you know, <laughs> while you have your soup, uh, you can then just bite, bite it into it. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant idea. I Amazing. actually, I love it. I love Thank it. you, chefs. Claims Chef. approval I'm, as well. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired by you. Okay, cool. good. So I've added some chopped up parsley in here. That's of course up to you. I know there's a lot of people that don't really like fresh herbs, uh, which is very sad, but I would add it. Come on now, come okay. on now. The wonderful thing about soups as well is that you can make it in large quantities and then enjoy it like over a week or something like that, exactly. over a couple of days. Exactly, and soups freeze really well. It's yes. like for potato soups I would be a bit wary of. Okay. But everything else is pretty much easy. So we've got some corn flour. This is going to be a thickener. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some fresh full cream milk in here from Clover. Mm -hmm. Just going to mix that. So you want to make a paste first because if you don't do this and you throw it straight into your soup, you're gonna just get one big corn flour lump. Oh, okay, all right, that's, a, that's why you, you don't do that. want that. So you're just gonna mix this in beautifully mm -hmm. and we're gonna chuck it in now with our milk. So you're gonna add about a liter, she calls for a liter in her recipe, uh -huh. and a little bit of cream. Okay, that's to, uh, to, to thicken it as well, hey? Yes, and to add that also beautiful richness to it. So we're gonna add about a half of this. It's so easy to make, actually. Um, Super, super easy. Something that, that, that looks so amazing at the, uh, at the end. So decadent. It yeah. really, really is decadent. So we're going to add in our cream mm -hmm. and then our beautiful flour, corn flour paste that we've made here. Add that and then you're going to allow it to cook for how long exactly? I would say just until mm. it's thick because your chicken is cut into small little cubes. It's going to cook when this comes up to temperature. Mm -hmm. and. You let once, it, like I said to our viewers, like when you're making a white sauce and it brings it up to a boil, that is the thickest point it's going to get to because of the corn flour. Okay. So when it comes up to a boil, it thickens immediately, and that is going to be your consistency. Then you can see: Do I add more corn flour? Do I add more milk? It's entirely up to you what you prefer as a soup. Like I said, some people like thick or thin soups. Excellent. Salt and pepper for seasoning. Always salt and pepper. And I actually added a lot of salt and pepper to this one because you want to bring out those beautiful flavors. Okay. Now, what else could you possibly add to that if you wanted? Because I, I like soups with a lot of texture. So the more interesting the textures, the better. So uh, could you add carrots to this maybe? You could what add carrots, but I think what would lend itself beautifully to this is some chopped up leeks or even char grilled leeks and potatoes. You could oh. do pota oh, little yes. cubes of potato mm -hmm. for more of that texture. You could add some crispy onions on the top. 
You could add crusty bread, or actually I would do garlic bread. Garlic Beautiful bread. Beautiful toasted garlic bread. And what about coriander? Bread. I'm getting a suggestion from our, from our producer. You coriander? Could do coriander. Yeah. You could totally do coriander if you want to go more to that side. I know Graham wouldn't probably eat the soup then, but... Oh, is it? He's <laughs> anti-coriander. He's so anti-coriander. <laughs> but it's beautiful with it. I would do parsley coriander together, and mm. you could even do thyme. Wonderful stuff. Well, Lutfia's super recipe is available on our website, expressoshow.com, if you missed out. And Lutfia Gabir, thank you very much for sharing that wonderful family favorite recipe with us. Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. Now, we've been following their journey since the very first episode of Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao, and last night we witnessed them win smooth fame and fortune with Tropica. I'm, of course, talking about the smooth winners, Nadia Jafta and Trevor Lagerway from Team Cool Red, who have a combined one million rand in the bank right now. And if you've missed that winning moment of Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao last night, take a quick look. So I head up these stairs, I'm on the top, Nadia's on her way up, and I look around, there's nothing up here. Then I look up again, and there's, there's stairs again going up. I climb up there, and on top of the very top of this castle is a massive chest. And I'm just like, open it, open it! <laughs> Put the key in, turn it, it drops down, we unhook it. Maybe. Team Cool Red have completed the grand finale challenge and won Tropica Island of Treasure, Curacao. <laughs> oh man, I can only imagine how they must have felt at the time and Nadia and Trevor are joining me via video call this morning. Congratulations once again guys on winning smooth fame and fortune. How does it feel? Come on, yes! Yes! How does it feel to be the winners of Tropica Island of Treasure, Kieran Sound? Nadia, let me start with you. Um, I don't know, it just feels surreal right now. I think, I think what makes it more real is that everybody's, you know, congratulating and everything. So, it's an amazing feeling. Nothing can beat this feeling right now. Yeah, I can imagine. Trevor? Yeah, what a great feeling. Eh? Like, all that hard work paid off and... Yeah, oh, just so grateful and so stoked that Nadia and I could do it together. It was such a great team effort. Yeah, man. And Trevor, your experience started off with just a simple audition video that you posted on Instagram. Summarize for me how the journey has been since then. Yeah, it's been incredible. I mean, the courage to post that first video. <laughs> it was just like off the cuff. I just went with it. I watched a video of the other boys doing an obstacle course race. So I thought I would, you know, the celeb boys, Vazi and um, Kay and Boa. And so I kind of wanted to show them up a bit. Can't believe I made it and actually won as well. I mean, yeah. what are the odds? Absolutely, man. What a story that is. Um, and Nadia, you know, on your behalf, you were approached by Top Tropica to be part of this season and become the face of Team Cool Red. I mean, looking at where you are right now, how glad are you that you agreed to this opportunity and how was that experience for you? Oh, I'm so glad. Like, honestly, <laughs> I 
yeah. as as we saw, uh, my mother didn't have much faith in me to win. <laughs> <laughs> she did it. That was the biggest accomplishment for me. Was just proving her, uh, proving to her that I could actually do it and win. So um, just having the courage to um, take on this experience was good enough for me, and then winning was just a cherry on top. Yeah. I can imagine that the journey itself must have been so empowering and so uh, kind of revealing of your inner strength in many ways. Definitely. It definitely brought out a side that I never knew existed until a million rand was put on the table. Too much strength will come out when that's on the cards. Yeah, it's got a way of doing that to you. So if you can transport yourselves back to that moment when you realized that you just won Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao. Here you are standing atop, you know, a, a castle, if you would, overlooking the ocean, and you realize that you've just won the competition. How did that moment kind of play out in your minds? I, I didn't even get that far, Kat. I didn't even get that far to imagine winning the, the competition. So when it actually happened, it was the first experience and it was amazing. I never pitched it in my head because I honestly like only near the end I thought okay maybe we could win this thing. Yeah. But if, until then it was there were so many variables that could you know come into play that could affect your whole game. Yeah, I mean I I just recall standing on top of that that you know that broken down fort or whatever it is castle thing and um, just raising that flag and just the excitement and jubilation of like finally winning this thing after all the blood, sweat and tears that we had put in. It was just, it was just mind blowing. All right, now, is there anything that you'd like to say to the viewers and supporters who tuned in over the past 13 weeks? I mean, they were an absolutely amazing part of the show and the journey, especially on social media where I think they had their own show that entertained all of us as well, given the commentary that we saw um, on every episode. What do you have to say to all of the fans out there, Nadia? You can go. Um, I just want to say thank you for all the support. Um, you know, we saw all the comments of everybody rooting for us from the first episode. And yeah, um, I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much. And lastly, of course, the two of you had the opportunity to be part of an iconic brand, which is Tropica, who managed successfully to deliver a season nine of Tropica Island of Treasure. And you guys have made history as the winners of season nine of Tropica Island of Treasure. So what would you like to say to Tropica on making this a possibility for you? Yeah, it's, it's wow, what an opportunity they gave me. I mean, crazy from literally seeing the thing, you know, advertised to actually then getting in, going to the island, experiencing it all, and winning. I mean, wow, like that's once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And so, yeah, a massive, massive thank you to Tropica. Um, such a cool, lively, fun, funky brand. Um, you know, all the colors of the bottles and everything that it stands for. Um, we drank a lot of Tropica. Everyone always asks me, did you actually drink Tropica on the island? <laughs> and I can tell you now, we did. It was so hot that we were just <laughs> glugging that stuff down, which was delicious. So, yeah, it's a great brand. Thanks so much. Oh, man, listen, we as the production team applaud you guys for being the winners of Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao. Congratulations once more, Trevor and Nadia. Okay, can I say one more thing? Of course. Black Lives Matter. Yep, Absolutely. true story. Very, very poignant <laughs> message at this time indeed. And thank you very much for sharing it as well and sharing your experiences of Tropica Island of Treasure with us, guys. Uh, indeed, a very well-deserved win. Anybody who would have watched that series knows exactly what we're talking about when we say you deserved it every step of the way. Now, if you at home missed that winning moment last night, make sure that you tune in to SABC3 on Saturday evening at 8 o'clock PM. That's for the repeat of this grand finale of Tropica Island of Treasure, Curacao. Next time on Tropica Island of Treasure, Curacao, the final two teams race to claim the grand prize of one million rand. The massive gap that Team Cool Red had amassed has been broken down. Decision, decision. We are here and we're coming for it. Still anyone's game. Now I'm starting to panic. Oh, my brain is fried. How badly do you want this? Plus, all the contestants look back at the adventure of a lifetime. That's Saturday at 8 p.m. only on SABC3. The stage is yours. 
What a what show. A what a show. Ah. Uh, Tropica Island of Treasure, Curacao, Tuesday uh, evening, uh, even evenings are not going to be the same again. And congratulations to Trevor and Nadia. Wow, what a win. Call me, guys. Call me. You and Ryle are shady. Like, what? you guys didn't even know Nadia and Trevor a few weeks ago. Now she won a, a 500,000 rand, a million oh. rand. So now you and Ryle are just like, call me. We've Nadia built a connection. I, We've know, built a connection week in, week out, watching their highlights. <laughs> They're with them during the highlights and the lowlights. And we've asked you at home about your highlights on Absolutely. social media. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Romano Besedenhout says, good morning, Expresso family. Congratulations to Nadia and Trevor. Hashtag Cool Red. The show was absolutely on fire from episode one. My favorite episode, I must say, was last night. It kept me on the edge of my seat. Mm. It was like watching a thriller movie. And then my team won. Gripping stuff. Love to see it. Mm. Another one came through from Lee uh, saying, they had a cool head going from day one. Worked in their favor. Won back to back. I must say, though, I respect Darren. Guy was so strong. Tried so hard. He was so great. But you know what? Get it? Yeah. Yeah, it next takes, time. yeah, you know what. Okay, then Renette uh, Kipter says, or Kupta says, uh, good morning, guys. I loved watching every episode. My highlight was Nadia's face, or Nadia's face when she opened the lock and yelled at Trevor, and then when they celebrated the win. Uh, Obedia Sally says, I never saw the final, uh, but we'll watch it on Saturday. This was overall the best Tropica. Uh, Island of Treasure, obviously. Uh, I loved all the contestants, but the red team was just the best from the beginning all the way to the end. This is Obedia. Yep, true. Uh, yes, true. and then last not, but not least, Yolanda says, Team Pineapple Gosh, I just love their teamwork. I shed tears in most episodes and in Thunder's laughter. Congratulations to Cool Red, even though I was rooting for Mango Peach. Nothing personal, guys. It's just a game, like it's in time double take. It's just a game, guys. It's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. Hashtag but of course, Tuesday, Tuesdays are definitely gonna, not going to be the same. But if you missed last night's uh, really gripping grand finale, do catch it on Saturday at 8 p.m. right here on SABC3. Congratulations again, Nadia and Trevor. It's better to give than receive, and there's no better time than the present. Although the COVID-19 pandemic is being felt worldwide, our fellow South Africans need our help right now more than ever. Woolworths, with the help of the Gift of the Givers Foundation, have launched the Full A Bag campaign. They need your help too. From as little as 10 rand, you can help feed someone three meals a day, and every bag donated feeds a family of five for two weeks, and it includes hygiene products to help curb the spread of the virus. Let's all band together to help our Rainbow Nation recover one meal at a time. So to donate, you can simply scan the code on screen right now or donate via EFT. And you can visit Woolworths.co.today forward slash together we will for all the info you need. It's my feel -good breakfast show. Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show live, large and in charge on this Wednesday morning. Thanks so much for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Now, the South African government produced a risk-adjusted strategy that provided regulations covering a wide range of activities across many sectors and services for the different risk levels. However, the document was difficult uh, for the general public to understand and not easily accessible. And so this left some South Africans feeling quite confused about the rules surrounding various lockdown levels, but also created an opportunity for the problem to be solved. So so enter Rahul Patel and his co-founded app called Lockdown Baza. And Rahul joins us this morning on the line to talk about Lockdown Baza and how it can make things a little bit easier. Rahul, great to have you this morning. Uh, how are you? Fantastic. Thanks. Great to be on your show and uh, good morning to your viewers. Now quickly describe to us what Lockdown Baza is, what the app is and its main purpose. Uh, the, the basic purpose is to simplify lockdown. Um, and it, it's COVID-19 simplified. Um, there's a 
whole vast array of uh, complex rules, regulations, guidelines that are constantly changing and evolving, and often rightly so for good reason. And we just wanted to simplify a lot of that admin for people so that people could quickly get to the right information that, that was relevant to them yeah. uh, within a click of a couple of buttons and a couple of swipes. Now, I think one of the many things is that, you know, obviously, as, as South Africans, we watch the presidential address, we watch the media briefings, but we can't really uh, make out the information that is relevant to us. And, of course, a big factor when it comes to producing something like this is the reliability of the information. So how do people know that the information that is provided on Lockdown Boza is accurate? It's, it's, a, it's a very important question. So the first thing we did is we always sourced our information from published government sources. Mm -hmm. So we are not changing the information. We are literally taking whatever the government is publishing or relevant industry bodies and putting it into simple bite-sized chunks under relevant categories. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're interested in the rules around exercise, you can quickly access that. If you want to know about schools for your children, you can quickly access that. Um, as opposed to obviously having to sit maybe um, through the entire briefing, you know, which can sometimes often take, you know, uh, several hours. Now also tell me about how the app is supported because it doesn't stand alone. I understand that you also have support on social media platforms and explain to me how these platforms then integrate in order to enhance the experience of Lockdown Bosom. Sure. So, so um, first of all, users can go to um, www.lockdownbosa.co.co.za uh, uh, to access the app, and they can install the app directly from their browser. There's mm -hmm. no need to go to the Android or App Store. You can literally install the app directly from your from your web browser for Google Chrome, for example. Um, and then uh, users are interacting with us on our Facebook page, which is Lockdown Bosa and Twitter and Instagram, which is at Lockdown Boza. Uh, we often get quite a lot of queries and questions, which uh, uh, there is a small team of us uh, supporting uh, you know, uh, our users and making sure those queries are answered in, in the fastest possible way. Yeah, yeah. Now, I also understand that you have a new feature that you've unveiled. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it's uh, very exciting and, and, and uh, uh, nice to be announcing it as a first on, uh, on your show this morning. So uh, literally, um, uh, we were burning the midnight oil last night, and overnight we launched a brand new feature, which is going to allow businesses to reopen safely. Oh, wow. um, as you know, under level three, most businesses, many, many app, you can quickly click the button, and within a couple of clicks, you can um, submit a form to, to get your essential supplies, whether it's masks, thermometers, uh, gloves, sanitizer, whatever it is that you need to reopen safely. That's absolutely amazing. Congratulations to you and the team on moving so quickly on this opportunity. Now, can you take us through a basic uh, walkthrough of the app itself and uh, basically how a user would engage with Lockdown Boza in order to require or acquire the information they need? Sure, no problems. Yeah, that's fine. So I, I, see, I see you've got your, your handset there. Yeah, I do, um, and I'm, I'm on the landing page, uh, lockdownboza.co. Yeah, well, you're, when you're on the landing page, I think it's uh, where it says, I can't see exactly what's on your handset. But well, it says, welcome, you, fellow South Africans. <laughs> okay, I'm going to choose a province. I'm going to click on that, yeah, and then so it throws out a list. Western Cape, and I'm guessing you guys are uh, in the city of Cape Town yeah, in terms of your there. district. Okay, so then Cape Town. Which, a couple Cape of clicks. And then, um, then it says, see what you're allowed to do. Uh, it shows you that in green, those that are indicated in green are permitted, in yellow, restricted, and in red, not permitted. Correct, yeah, that's, so that's just giving you a basic introduction. And we use a very simple traffic light symbol to, to show people what they can and can't do and what's restricted, um, which is very intuitive. Um, you can just go ahead and click next. Okay. Clicking next. And terms and then conditions. I think there's a page that just explains where we get our information, government sources. Okay. Uh, no, you know, we don't tolerate fake news and all those things. So I think you can just click again, head into next. Okay, accept the terms there. Uh, righty, then it's. Okay. And then you should arrive at a, what is probably a, quite a colorful page with yes. lots of bubbles. Uh, there it and is. Green, red, and amber colored bubbles. So uh, you can literally, um, at the top, there's a search bar. So, for example, if you want to type in gyms, for example, okay, as soon as you type yeah. in gym at the top, uh, you will see that uh, it will automatically search the entire list of activities and you'll see exercise. Yeah. If you click on exercise, 
and go into exercise, you can see we are currently on level three and you can see exactly what we can do under level three in terms of exercise. Like for oh, example, wow. you can exercise outdoors between certain hours of the day, but you, the gyms are still not open. You know, the public gyms are still not open. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like that for every type of different activity or category that you can think of. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you so much for taking us through that. So what does the future hold for Lockdown Boza? Yeah, it's a very good question. It's a question we're getting asked quite a lot. Um, so the, the central premise of our concept is really about simplifying things that are complex. And I think what, what COVID-19 or, or lockdown has taught us is that these are problems that existed in society well long before COVID came along, but the problems have been magnified. So uh, there are plenty of other issues that remain complex um, that we believe technology can solve. Mm -hmm. And really that's going to be our mission as a, as a, and goal as an organization is to try and simplify and basically you know, uh, provide almost a, a life hack to all the admin uh, that people have to deal with in their life using technology. Wow, man. Uh, congratulations to you and the team. Um, Raul on this innovative product and I really hope that it does help to make South Africans lives um, easier most importantly help us to comply with all the regulations uh, and help to keep within the lanes of what we need to do to responsibly live our lives to the fullest thanks very much thank you so much of course, in a time of uncertainty and confusion, perhaps Lockdown Boza could be your means of making sense of the world around you. Now, to find out more, you can visit www.lockdownboza.co.za or you can check them out, Lockdown Boza, on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Here on Expresso, we take mental health very seriously, now more than ever with the social distancing protocols that have been enacted worldwide. But with social distancing, the reality is that many people may be experiencing loneliness, which can have a large negative impact on a person's mental well-being. Durban-based filmmaker Tammy Marriott recently created a short film to talk about loneliness during lockdown. The film, titled Alone, has already won an international award and has been accepted into various other festivals. Tammy joins us to tell us more about this short film. A very good morning to you, Tammy. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you here on the show today because this is a very relevant and very important topic, loneliness. What's the message, you know, yeah. you're trying to send through this film? So I think during lockdown, a lot of people go into survival mode. They get worried. Am I going to have enough to eat? Am I going to get sick? Am I safe? But something that's often overlooked is their mental health. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's really important to bear that in mind and bear the, know the toll that loneliness can have on people mm -hmm. so that we can connect and reach out and just help those that are all on their own during lockdown. The interesting thing about this film is that it was originally <laughs> written and shot as a zombie apocalypse movie before lockdown. Tell us about how it quickly changed to what it is now. So this film, when it started, was something completely different. It was, didn't really have any meaning, if you ask me. It was just a fun little project we were doing with friends. Mm. But because there was no speaking in the film, it was all voiceover-based. We were able to change the narrative to suit our narrative now. Mm. When lockdown started, I started thinking of writing a film that could encourage people to connect with each other and encourage people to reach out. And as I started writing this, I realized the footage from the zombie film that we never released actually worked perfectly. So mm. it all worked out. How are you keeping mentally fit during, you know, the lockdown period? So I'm very lucky enough to be with my family. I've mm. got my husband, I've got my pets. We're keeping really busy, trying to spend some time outside every day. Mm. And also just reaching out to everyone around us. I speak to my mom and my friends almost every day. I think we're very lucky to live in the age of the internet, so we are able to easily um, get a hold of each other and just be honest about how you're feeling. Thank goodness for technology, right? Now, Alone, yeah. <laughs> Alone won Best uh, Short Film at the Unfork International Film Festival in Puerto Rico, which is a big accomplishment, I must say. Congratulations to you and your team. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And a message that um, now, more than ever, you know, we can use stories to connect. What are some of the reactions you've received? What impact have you seen this movie have on people? So I first received a huge impact locally, which was what made me put, enter it into international film festivals. Mm. I had people messaging me, strangers, saying that the film had them in tears. 
There were mothers calling their daughters, friends reaching out to each other. The impact on social media was huge. The message hit home saying, you know what, everybody knows somebody who's all on their own during this lockdown. Mm. And have I thought about them? Have I reached out to them? Do they know they cared for? Mm. So, yeah, that, that was the great impact. That's a beautiful impact because on the show on Expresso, we always encourage people to build, you know, communities for communication, just to check up on each other, especially during the lockdown. It can, it can get really, really lonely. Now, you've got your finger on the pulse and are already planning on a film, uh, a short film rather, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Tell us more about that and how you plan on making that happen in light of, you know, the restrictions put in place. So we've actually started filming already. After Alone was released, it's quite a sad movie. Um, I think it drives people to action because it's sad. But I also felt like I would now like to do something happy. So mm -hmm. something that makes you feel good, something uplifting. So I wrote a new script for a new short film. It's called The Land Between Lockdown. Mm -hmm. It's about two children who are neighbors um, who want to see each other but obviously can't because of lockdown. And it's just about their story that ensues after that. We've started filming. We've done two days already. It's a two-man crew, myself and my husband. Mm. So we've got some hilarious behind the scenes of <laughs> me trying to scale walls with like tons of equipment <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, it's going really well and I'm hoping to release it in the next couple of weeks. Tammy, I love how the lockdown has not dampened your spirit because you are still creating and giving us the content that we need, especially during this time. How can you then encourage other creatives to be more innovative when it comes to content creation? You know, I think now is a very interesting time because a lot of people will have time for the first time in their lives to do things that they're passionate about and just to work on your own projects. Mm. So I think the restrictions that lockdown brings actually can bring out a completely different kind of creative project. None of these projects would have happened if it wasn't for lockdown. Mm. And I think the best advice would just be keep creating. I mean, most of us have cell phones, so we can film even on our phones. Just doing what you want to do and keep pushing out your message. And lastly, your short film, Alone, is free to watch online. Where can people see it exactly? Alone is available on our website, theeditroom.co.za, or on Facebook or on Instagram. Just search for The Edit Room and you will see Alone comes up almost immediately. Tammy Marriott, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It was a ple pleasure rather having you on the show. I continue slaying, you know, the film industry both locally and internationally. I hope you have a fantastic lockdown further. <laughs> thank you so much, you too. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's just gone past 8 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Here's a look at the news headlines. On the national news front, Western Cape Education Minister Debbie Schaefer says she will not stop anyone from teaching a child unless she's ordered to do so by a court. This as the South African Human Rights Commission has threatened to take the Provincial Education Department to court for reopening schools this week instead of next week as per the national government's pronouncements. On Sunday, Basic Education postponed the national resumption of classes for grades 7 and 12 to Monday. The effect of the coronavirus pandemic on South Africa's print media has left it, quote, desperately looking for new ways of sustaining itself. This according to a report released by the South African National Editors Forum on the impact of COVID-19 on journalism. The print media had for years been able to stay afloat thanks to advertising revenue, but this has plunged to between an estimated 40 and 100 percent. On the other hand, there has been a massive surge in traffic to credible online news sources with a 72 percent increase to news websites. On the international news front, the UK yesterday warned China not to overstep the mark with regards to Hong Kong as it intends to impose new national security laws on the semi-autonomous region. British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said China had a choice. It can go ahead and violate the autonomy and the rights of the people of Hong Kong or it can step back and live up to its responsibilities as a leading member of the international community. There has been massive protests against Beijing's declaration that it intends to impose national security laws on the city. Now, poachers have killed at least six elephants as the group was drinking at the Omo River at Mago National Park in southern Ethiopia. They were found with their tusks missing. Now, the park's warden described the incident as a massacre. He said the poachers used more than 30 bullets on just one elephant. Poaching is not normally seen in this scale or on this scale in this area. And in the whole of last year, authorities documented just 10 deaths. And now, how dolphins are missing humans during lockdown. 
A pod of dolphins in Queensland, Australia has been bringing ashore gifts from the sea, apparently because they're missing their interactions with humans. Now, the humpback dolphins usually mingle with visitors at Barnacles Cafe in Tin Can Bay, north of, sun of the Sunshine Coast, but it's now been weeks since visitors lined up to feed them due to corona restrictions. Now, among the treasures the marine uh, creatures have provided are some sea sponges, barnacle-encrusted bottles, and pieces of coral. The cafe says in its Facebook page that the dolphins have been bringing them regular gifts displaying how much they miss the public interaction and attention. An expert in dolphin behavior, Barry McGovern, says he's not surprised by their action. Dolphins can do anything, he says. They use tools, they have culture, they often play with bits of weed and coral, and they even have something similar to names in signature whistles. In fact, he says, we shouldn't be too flattered. They probably don't miss humans per se, they just miss their free meals. And now turning our gaze to the world of entertainment, celebrities have been finding meaningful ways to engage their fans and the public on how we can use the ongoing police reform protests in the United States as an opportunity for fruitful education and discussion on systemic racism. An inspired motivation toward donation has come from actors who have played cops on TV. Griffin Newman, who portrays Arthur Everest on The Tick, as well as Stephanie Beatrice, who plays Detective Rosa Diaz on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, have led the way by urging their peers who play or have played police officials on TV to donate a share of their paychecks amid the protests. Proceeds donated to their charity of choice, the Community Justice Exchange, will be distributed to local bail funds dedicated to assisting with the release of arrested protesters. Now, Beatrice tweeted, quote, I'm an actor who plays a detective on TV. If you currently play a cop, if you make tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in residuals from playing a cop, I'll let you do the math. The rallying support for meaningful protest is encouraging to see indeed. Well, that's it for the news on this Wednesday morning. Right now, let's take another look at the weather. Thank you so much, Kat. Let's have a final look at the temperatures across the country. But first, we've asked you to send through your sunrise pictures this morning. Lucky in Kubo. Nkube wishes us a good morning with this gorgeous sunrise picture showing off the early morning sky and quiet streets of Johannesburg. Now, the city of gold can expect hazy sunshine today, reaching a maximum temperature of 23 degrees. Another favorite of ours, Father Khan, also sent through a sunrise picture for this morning all the way from Richards Bay in KwaZulu-Natal. Here we can see the sun making its first appearance from behind the trees. Now, plenty of sunshine can be expected for Richards Bay today, reaching a high of 29 degrees which is the highest temperature in the country today. Thank you to both Lucky and Father for sending through your sunrise pictures. We hope you'll have a fantastic start to your Wednesday morning. Now, cool and fine conditions can be expected across the country today, starting off with Polokwane, your lowest five, peaking at 24 degrees. Plenty of su sunshine can be found in Mbombela, ranging from 9 to 28 degrees. For you, Pretoria, your low is eight, peaking at 24. And then hazy sunshine can be seen in Johannesburg, with a minimum temperature of seven and a high of 23. Mostly sunny conditions expected for you, Mahi King, ranging from six to 26 degrees. Clare Storp, 224. Kimberley for you, it is 524. And the coolest start of the day can be found in Bloemfontein, ranging from zero to 23 degrees. The highest temperature in the country can be found in Richards Bay today, with a minimum temperature of 17, peaking at 29 degrees. And then partly sunny conditions for you, Peter Madsburg, with a low of 10 and a high of 28. If you do find yourself in South Africa's playground today, Durban, your minimum temperature is 19, peaking at 26 degrees, and then sunny with areas of high clouds expected for you, Mtata, ranging from 10 to 26 degrees. East London, 14 at 23, and then a light westerly breeze of 7 kilometers per hour expected for you, Craddock, with a low of 6 and a high of 25. Sun through some high clouds for you, Port Elizabeth, with a low of 13 and a high of 21. George, 10 18 Sutherland 7 19 and then times of clouds and sun expected for the mother city today Cape Town ranging from 10 to 19 degrees Worcester 10 20 and then partly sunny with a light northerly breeze of 7 kilometers per hour expected for you Uppington ranging from 9 to 28 degrees but of course being on lockdown does not mean we can't get to see this beautiful country that we live in so please do send us a picture or video of your town and we could show it live on the show so 
make sure to include a beautiful picture of yourself and why you love your town so much but of course whatever the weather wherever you find yourself happy wednesday to all of you Hey, people work hard every day across South Africa, but I think the hardest working bunch has to be the fraudsters all over the world. They're always busy trying to get your money. Mm. And over the last two days, we've shared how fraudsters use emails and phone calls to pretend to, to be from your bank in order to retrieve your personal information and steal your money. Yes, fraud is a real threat and we are all vulnerable every single day. So courtesy of NetBank, we're bringing you crucial information that you need to keep top of mind at all times. Absolutely, so first off, um, we, you, we do need to make sure that we are using credible websites, right? Mm -hmm. Fraudsters are able to hack into websites and access our online banking details. However, credible websites from reputable brands and of course outlets have serious security measures on their websites that will keep your banking details safe so make sure that you're not just going on any website yeah to for example those details yeah true true because also if you're for example making a, a purchase for the first time mm. uh, from a site that you haven't used before do some research to ensure that the site is credible it's very important but most importantly check that the web browser bar at the top of the page uh, 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 you know has HTTPS the S there stands for secure, okay. and it should have a security lock next to it. If it doesn't, it means you're at the wrong place. If you see that, uh, it's got a lock, then you know that you are safe. Yep. NetBank are also urging consumers to avoid shopping on public Wi-Fi. So this means that free Wi-Fi, that network that is available, uh, you know, everywhere at your local mall or maybe even at your local coffee shop that you mm -hmm. like to go and visit, those networks are very easy for fraudsters to hack into. So stick to your either your own data or Wi-Fi at home, as simple as that. Mm, mm. And if a website is offering deals that are too good to be true, they usually are. And if you ever receive a suspicious phone call or a message or an email that appears to be from your bank, please do trust your instincts and do not share any personal details, mm. any pins, any passwords. Rather, contact your bank immediately, chat to them and report uh, any fraud uh, to your bank by visiting their website or their app, uh, the app of the official contact details as well. Make sure you stay safe out there. Okay. So I'm chatting to Umalume Mosta here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now, and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker, and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner, that's a habit worth keeping. Okay. Let's call the guy. He's, he, hello, Dr. Taco. Speaking. Hi. Hi, how, how are you, you doing? I'm very well. Good. Right? So, just to confirm, it's my auto, correct? Yes, it is my auto. Like legs. Like my, like my auto? My auto? Like my auto, yes. My oh, that's auto. better. That's better. That's perfect. Yes, that's perfect. Awesome. We are in an ad break right now. Uh, 30 seconds, and then we're coming to you, okay? Okay, no problem. It's my feel good breakfast show. It's a Wednesday and you're still keeping it locked right here to your Feel Good Breakfast Show on SABC3. It's a start to a brand new month as well. And June is World Infertility Awareness Month. And the main goal this month is to raise awareness and open up the conversation about infertility, which affects both women and men. It's a very difficult conversation to have. Now, infertility is a problem that millions of couples face worldwide. Now, joining us this morning to tell us a bit more about infertility, please welcome uh, on call uh, gynecologist and obstetrician, Dr. Tato Maoto. Good morning doctor morning and thank you for the invitation 
thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's start right at the beginning. What is infertility? And maybe take us through some, what are, main, what are some of the main causes of infertility? Well, infidel, infertility is actually quite a unique uh, condition because it, it involves two people instead of one, uh, but it's defined as uh, uh, an inability of a couple to fall pregnant over one year period of regular sexual intercourse without the use of contraception. Mm -hmm. And this is in uh, where the, the female partner is under 35 years of age. And then in those patients who where the female partner is over the age of 35, we use uh, 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 six months uh, because those patients actually need to be worked up a bit sooner. Um, uh, when it comes to the common causes of infertility, um, Obviously, we divide it into the male causes and the female causes, uh, but uh, you can divide that into uh, hormonal causes. Usually, the hormones that are produced and regulate uh, the, the, in the male, the, the formation of sperm, and in the female, um, your menstrual cycle. So if there's any abnormality in your hormones, uh, that can cause infertility. Uh, for the female, you've got tubal factors where your tubes are blocked. You can have implantation problems where you uh, you have problems with implantation of the embryo. Um, and then you can also have, as I said previously, that you can also have hormonal problems. So it's similar in the male where you can also have blockage of sperm swimming up. So uh, that can also cause infertility. And that's usually caused by um, infections or any previous trauma uh, to the testes. Mm. This must be such a difficult difficult conversation to have, uh, but what are some of the emotional aspects of infertility on an individual and or more so couples? That's, that's actually a very good question because, uh, I mean, in our setting, we're still seeing uh, a lot of stigma that's attached with infertility. Mm -hmm. So a lot of couples still have uh, a lot of difficulty speaking about infertility and, and um, uh, actually seeking help for it. So the, it, it, the, the actual process is actually quite emotional and, and psychological. So um, you get a lot of depression that comes with it. There's a lot of blame uh, between couples um, and um, there can be uh, depression, severe depression that re actually requires psychological and psychiatric help. Mm. Would you then say there are treatment options available and maybe are there any lifestyle changes that one can boost uh, for fertility? Well, let's start with the lifestyle first because uh, we've actually seen a decline over time um, when it comes to fertility. And the result of that is, is, our, is mostly our lifestyle. So um, just looking at alcohol, so you can, you can lower your alcohol intake, you can stop smoking. And the big one is, and the most difficult, I guess, for most of our patients is um, losing weight. So just um, losing 10% of your weight, if you're a woman, can actually improve your fertility chances. And then when it comes to management options, uh, that is very dependent on the underlying cause. So there are different management options that are available um, depending on that underlying cause. So if we find a uh, uh, let's say a problem with uh, the male, where the male is not producing enough sperm or isn't producing sperm at all. One can actually go into the testes and look for sperm. So you do a sperm extraction, or you can do what we call, uh, and it's a type of IVF. IVF stands for in vitro fertilization, where we do ICSI. It's basically where we take um, uh, sperm from the male and we take one sperm and, and fertilize one um, egg with that one sperm under a microscope. So uh, most of the management options uh, ideally are, uh, are geared specifically to the patient and geared specifically to the underlying cause. You touched on this, you said at the age of 35, and I, I, we always hear this, especially for women, they say your biological clock is, uh, is ticking, but why is it so important for young couples not to wait too long if they are wanting to have children? Mm. Uh, 35 is actually, it's, 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 it's a good cutoff point because for our female partners, you're born with a certain number of eggs. So over time, you're losing eggs. So each month you menstruate, um, you're losing, you're losing your eggs. So that's why we use that time. And we know that at the age of 35, there's a, there's a decline in your fertility. So the reason why you should seek help earlier is because um, the earlier you seek help, 
the the better your outcomes. So if we find the cause early, it's like with any other condition, the earlier you get it, the better your treatment options, depending on, on what we find. Dr. Tata Maoto, thank you so much for joining us this morning, gynecologist and obstetrician, for answering all our questions with regards to Infertility Awareness Month uh, today. Thank you very much. Now, infertility can affect anyone. It doesn't matter what your race, your religion, or economic status is. To those struggling with infertility, we are thinking about you this month of June as we continue to raise awareness on this topic. Now, an optimal functioning immune system is crucial to staying healthy during this winter and especially during these times of the coronavirus and, of course, the stress that it, that, that is putting on all of us. Now, to maintain your health and overall wellness, your body needs sufficient vitamins and other nutrients. And some foods are especially good to support your immune system to function optimally. And here to talk to us about this and to give us advice on staying healthy during this winter is Woolies dietitian Cindy Chin. Cindy, hello. Great to have you back with us again. Hi, lovely to be here. Although I did say to you, I feel very socially distant. So <laughs> We're just obeying away. the regulations. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> now let's pick up and, and start talking first about what foods I should be stocking up on uh, this season to keep me and my family healthy during this time. Yeah. So as a, as a dietitian, it's such a common question. And right now it's all about immunity and all these supplements that I should take. Um, and unfortunately, there's no magic bullet, like one thing or one superfood that I should be packing up on. It really is just um, understanding that our immune system is quite an intricate, complex system that needs, just like every other part of our body, mm -hmm. needs the right building blocks and nutrients and vitamins to keep it healthy so that it can function optimally and uh, be almost like fighting fit and, and there to help um, boost your, your overall well-being. Yeah. Now, so are there no any one specific food? Yeah, but are, are there any foods that you could suggest that I include in my diet to support uh, the, a so, healthy immune yeah. system? It actually goes back to basics about a really fundamentally healthy diet. So, not skipping on whole grains or not cutting out specific food groups. So, having making sure you have those whole grains, lots of uh, colorful, diverse vegetables, fresh and uh, prepared in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, oily fish, uh, healthy fats, unsaturated fats from, from over nuts and seeds and, and olive oil. Um, and the other thing is that it, it can't just be healthy, it needs to be delicious. Because if you're going to prepare <laughs> um, a cold salad on a winter's day, <laughs> your family is not going to want to eat it. Mm. So for me, something like um, roasted veggies and using lovely herbs and spices just to really... Um, a lot of rich flavor especially in this colder weather i think goes a long way to getting your family to actually eat those foods it's, it's all good to buy it but if no one eats it it's not going to be very good either very true now besides food um what else can i do and what else can you suggest for staying healthy so it goes back to sensible uh, healthy lifestyle practices so getting enough sleep i think often you know, with all this binge watching of tv and you know everyone's in lockdown i think some of our habits or disciplines have maybe fallen away um trying to get some regular exercise yeah. smoking less or stopping if, if it's possible and now with this alcohol thing <laughs> trying to drink in moderation <laughs> so, because being aware that alcohol actually does impact the immune system it, yeah. it puts a lot of stress on the body to actually get rid of this almost like a toxin it's it views it as so it does put a bit of extra strain on the immune system and then stress management. I mean, it's not kid. We, I mean, these are uncertain times. So be aware of those stressful. It could be underlying stress. It might not be in your face stress as if like you're going to work and peak out traffic. That's just kind of stress. But this underlying sense of uncertainty mm. um, amongst your family members might actually have this uh, an impact on your immune system without you even really realizing it. So looking after your body in that sense um, is very important. And drinking enough water, it's such a basic um, right. piece of advice, but we often forego that. Um, and then lastly, just practicing really good hygiene. So, I mean, you've heard this no end, I mean, in the, la in the last few months, but wash your hands, uh, keep socially just two meters apart or one and a half meters apart away from people and cough into your elbow. So yeah. very basic things, but sometimes it's good to be reminded of those things. Yeah, and of course, getting a good night's rest, sleeping and water, just yeah. so important. And some of the basic things that you can actually control quite easily in terms of your water intake and the amount of rest you get per night. Now, what about vitamin and mineral supplementation? Are there any that so you that's a big one. Yeah? I've been uh, getting a lot of... Um, 
questions from people to think to, to ask me well what should they be supplementing or is there should they be taking extra supplements of vitamin c or vitamin mm. d um the truth is that if you're eating a, a well-balanced diet the general population doesn't really need mega doses of vitamins especially single supplements mm. they could actually be potentially harmful to certain populations as well um unless you're malnourished or at risk of a deficiency where you have a specific medical condition or you yeah a vegan who's not eating specific foods, you might need a, a supplement. But often it's best to consult with your doctor or dietitian to get that specific advice because it's potentially dangerous to take high-dose single supplements. If you're concerned, then I would say probably a, a general multivitamin um, is a, isn't a bad idea. And if you are able to, do try to spend a little bit of time in the sun with your arms or legs exposed for about 10 minutes every day so that mm -hmm. your body can actually make vitamin D. Vitamin D is not only important for bone health, but it actually does support your immune system. If you're not able to get out, um, then a low-dose supplement is not a bad idea at all. Um, food, if I could just add lastly, yes. would be your first go-to place. If you always. can always make sure your diet is as varied as possible with healthy foods, that should give you all those micronutrients that you need before you look to supplement. No good eating junk food and then taking a pill, right? <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. I understand. Now, what about gut health? How important is it in contributing towards a healthier immune system? So it's so important. I mean, we, there's so much research, um, and I mean, it's been it's been ongoing for the last twenty years. I'd say since I qualified, um, but it's such a complex system that we don't know enough yet to give general recommendations to the population to say, well, take this particular probiotic supplement and it will cure this disease. So we can't actually say that at this point in time. So for the moment, as a dietitian, what I often recommend is then to make sure that you supply your body with those, what we call prebiotics. So what that is, it's the fiber or the food that fuels the healthy bacteria to grow in your, in your large intestine. Um, and then that promotes a, a healthy gut environment. Um, so you being proactive, eating lots of fibrous foods, uh, colorful vegetables, legumes and lentils, and those are all providing um, the essential building blocks, essentially, for those bacteria to thrive and grow in your gut. Um, and that can then support your immune system indirectly. Cindy, as always, thank you very much for your time and expertise. It's always appreciated. Thank you so much. Of course, it's always a good idea to look after our bodies from the outside, but good health does start with what you eat, as you've just heard from Cindy Chin. Now, stay tuned, because a little bit later on, Chef Clem is going to be sharing a scrumptious dish that will help to support your immune system so that it functions optimally. Thank you, thank you. While the medical world scrambles to find both a cure and a vaccine for the coronavirus, many people are wondering at the moment, especially here in the South Africa as we enter flu season, whether getting a flu vaccine would help reduce their chances of contracting COVID-19. So we thought we'd chat to our resident, Dr. Michael Moll, to get his take on this. Uh, Mike, always great to connect with you. How are you doing? Hey, Graham, always good, man. Still healthy, still breathing clearly, and uh, not too many coughs, so all good. Um, that, that is music to my ears, my friend, because normally around this time of the year, we would start to see the flu kind of working its way in, and a lot of us would, would naturally be going for a flu jab, if that's your, your preference. Do you think people should be getting the flu jab this year? Where do you stand on the flu jab in general? 
What's interesting you said, if that's your preference, mm. Graham, I reckon everybody should be getting a flu jab every single year. And the reason is because it actually works. No vaccine can obviously be 100% effective, but studies have shown that protection from the flu vaccine in healthy adults is around 70 to 90% wow. when that vaccine recipe is well matched with the actual influenza strains that come along for the season. So yeah, Graham, preference or not, you should be getting a flu vaccine, if you can, every year. I um, get it, and it is readily available, and it's been made quite easy to to, to get now, which I, I think a lot of people are, are now starting to drift into this thought now, will a flu jab help to protect us in some way from getting COVID-19? Is there a connection? So no. Uh, the flu vaccine is designed to prevent infections with influenza viruses, which are quite different from coronaviruses, obviously, but that's not to say there isn't a connection. And that's why it's important we're talking, uh, talking about this. As I said, the flu vaccine won't prevent you from getting a coronavirus, but it can help the health system better respond to the outbreak of COVID-19, especially or essentially, you know, helping to flatten the curve without the frustrations of lockdown. Um, would it be correct to assume then that if you had flu, and especially a severe case of flu, would you be more vulnerable to get COVID-19 and possibly in a, in a worse state if you were to contract it? Would you be more susceptible to the dangers? So, Graham, it's a good point. I mean, your immune system is an impressive machine, but fighting off two viruses at once is a bit of a stretch, especially when both influenza and COVID tend to prefer, you know, the lower respiratory system. And, and coming back to your previous question, I mean, if, if people get their flu shots, fewer people are going to come down with the flu and come into clinics and doctors' rooms with non-specific symptoms, you know, fever and cough, which overlap with symptoms of COVID-19. And that means that having fewer flu patients is going to make it easier to find and more importantly treat the patients with COVID-19. I mean, to give you some perspective, again, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but amongst healthy adults, the flu vaccine uh, reduces hospital admissions by 90%. So, yeah, absolutely, man. And that obviously brings to bear, I mean, part of the reason why we've had to prepare our health systems, it's not just for those that are going to be contracting COVID-19, but it's what about everyone else that gets sick while this massive strain is being put on our hospital system or our healthcare, healthcare system. So I've got to ask, and this might be a bit of a silly question, but I, I, I kind of tend to, to have this impression. Is it true that when you get a flu jab, it actually gives you the flu to prompt your body's immune system? How does it actually work? So you're not the only one, Graham. I mean, a lot of people don't want to get the flu jab because they're just going to get the flu, and that is a myth. It's a big myth. Vaccinations often get misunderstood because they're created from the offending viruses themselves. But when you get the flu shot, you're not being injected with the whole virus. You're receiving an inactivated or a, or a dead virus, if you like. That means the part of the virus that can infect you and make you sick is essentially turned off. But the part of the virus that stimulates your body to create antibodies, that's still on. And your body's antibodies are going to kill the flu virus as if it comes into contact with you later. So that's the whole idea behind the flu vaccine. You cannot get flu from the flu vaccine. You might, I, I suppose the only real side effect from a flu jab is a bit of a sore arm and there's nothing like a little bit of TLC to fix that. And knowing that you've tricked your immune system into thinking that it's gotten flu. Um, who should be having the flu um, vaccine? Graham, I mean, another great question. The vaccine is safe and it's an effective tool and so recommended for everybody, as we said, right up front. But there are specific groups for whom it's even more important. And those would be uh, people who are at high risk for flu and its complications because of any underlying medical conditions, things like heart disease and HIV and, and diabetes. Uh, everyone over the age of 65, you should be getting a flu jab. Mom and dad, flu jabs every single year. Adults and kids who are in close contact with high-risk cases also. And, of course, medical and nursing staff responsible for the care of high-risk cases. All of those individuals uh, shouldn't, even, shouldn't even be a preference. It should be a must get the flu jab. And I guess, Graham, I mean, if you're worried about having a flu jab on top of everything else that's going on right now, you know, give your doctor a call. Give one of our Hello Doctor doctors a call if you want to know. Uh, my suggestion is have the flu jab. If you're not sure, speak to a doctor. Oh, well, I'm glad we've got you on speed dial to chat to um, whenever we need to. Thank you so much for, for um, giving a very clear indication around that. For me, the numbers don't lie. I suppose the overriding message here is go and get your flu jab. Hopefully you found that helpful as well.
Oh, thank you, Graham. Now, it is always a pleasure having the doc on speed dial just to sort out all those uh, winter and influenza blues. But before we get cooking, we want to know about the Woolies Fill a Bag campaign where you can help to feed families in need during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, for as little as 10 Rand, you can provide one person with three meals for the entire day. And how can you get involved? Well, simply look on your screens and you'll see a QR code. Now, just scan that code with the SnapScan app or your bank app on your phone and donate today it's up to you to, to figure out how much you feel is necessary to contribute towards filling a bag but remember to encourage your friends family neighbors colleagues and chat groups to do exactly the same now every little bit will help in making such a big difference and now of course today is all about looking after your body and earlier we chatted to Woolies dietitian Cindy Chin who reminded us that you can support your immune system by making the right food choices. Now Chef Clem as usual developed a great recipe loaded with spinach, veggies, ginger, lemon and grains that pack a heap of nutrients to give that body what it needs. So Clem give us the lowdown on this beautiful recipe. This is a favorite of mine. I've, I'm very familiar with this style yeah. but I know you got that little uh -huh. pizzazz that you added to it so what's happening man well Cindy's so inspiring not just mm. about like when it comes to information about like nutrition and dietary um, information she's actually so knowledgeable about food in general like even just hearing her talk is so inspiring for me so this recipe is all Cindy dedicating this recipe to her Cindy Thank Chin Cindy. for the win <laughs> yes so she spoke about like um, using leafy greens and getting your nutrients from like all the vegetables and like just combining flavors and textures mm -hmm. i think is so important a lot of times people think when you're eating healthy you're eating for a nutritional cause it's going to be boring yeah and that's not the it's not the case we know this initially actually is because you think eating clean means yeah. not adding that flavor so it's often a steamed chicken breast dry veg uh -huh. uh, and like planned rice no flavor to it right. but you eventually realize that you can still add flavor without compromising on those goals and mm -hmm. killing that calorie counter and i think the chicken breast the yes, chicken breast yes but the thing about <laughs> chicken breast yes it can go dry but if you cook it like we're going to cook it today it's going to be packed full of flavor it's going to be spicy and it's going to give you what you need you're going to get that source of protein plus you're getting the benefits of all the spices and the flavors in it as well i mean that's how you eat eat adventurous this but is, be mindful of what you're eating. Yeah, this is key. I think there's too many days where us uh, muscle gym fiends have like just indulged in too much dry chicken. Nah. So save us, Clem. Save dry us. Dry chicken <laughs> is done. Okay, so what I've done is I've made my life super easy. This is ultra convenient, but you get in the nutrients from this dish. So I got my Willie's roasting veg. All I did was I seasoned it with a little bit of salt, a little pepper, olive oil, because fat's not the bad guy, yes, but it is in good. moderation. A little bit of olive oil there, and I roasted it. Now, can we just talk about this tray of vegetables over here? Mm. It was full of veggies, yeah. okay? But Chef Nicole Snelling has been snacking. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> care, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm calling her out. On TV, she's been snacking. All my veggies are gone. Nicole, shame on you. Nicole, <laughs> Nicole, it's fine. I've got more. I've got more. It's okay. So, roast these until they really charred. And people get a bit lazy with the oven. Be patient. Get that color on your veggies. Mm. It makes all the difference in the world. It adds so much flavor to your dish. So you got the veggie element done, and that was that's done for you because the chopping's been done. So it's a toss, toss, toss oven. Then pop us to the side. What you're gonna do then is you're gonna take your veggies, half of the veggies. <laughs> and you're gonna get Look, some. In Nicole's friends, I cannot blame her. Look how good that is. I know, though. It I know. smells good, golden brown. I mean, ah. I mean, if anything, it. if you're gonna snack, snack on the veggies. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. It's okay. You're, you're forgiven, Nicole. You're forgiven. <laughs> just, just today. Okay. So I've got some um, baby spinach. As soon as, as soon as the veggies come out the oven, pop it on the spinach. Okay. The excess heat that's in the veggies are gonna start wilting the spinach. And it's another uh. way to add like another leafy green in there. Kids are gonna love this. I swear to you, it's so delicious. It's so flavorful. I believe kids, once they see texture and once they see different shapes and colors, they're more inclined to actually dig in. Definitely, I'll make it fun and trick them into eating the greens. I like that clip. All the kids. <laughs> Smart Level stuff. number one of parent <laughs> parenting, trick your kids. That's the way. Okay, so um, seven grain medley. This pack is amazing. We spoke about this before we went oh, live. I mean, it. Woolies have got the most amazing packs of like these little rice. They've got samp and beans. This guy has been my go-to. It's so amazing, so nutrient dense, and the flavors and textures, once again, it's not just one grain, and you actually taste the difference in all the grains that are in there. So all I do is you can pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds and heat it up. 90 seconds, 90 is that seconds, it? 90 seconds, yeah. And oh then man. it heats up and you're good. So, so you don't have bland rice, you don't have to wait 15 minutes to boil it. Brown rice. Bang. So no, 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 that's you. all you do, that's all you do. <laughs> all you're gonna do is you're gonna add that to your, to your spinach, add your veggies, and that's the salad that's done. Half but your veggies? 
Hop. <laughs> Nicole, half the veggies. But what's really cool is this goes really well with beef, lamb, chicken, fish. And it's a kind of like, you can kind of play around with the flavors. If you don't have the roast veggies, use something else that you have in the house. Use your leftover veggies that you have. Ah, that's a good point. As long as you get the, the spinach in there and you get the grains in there, make it your own. Absolutely. So cool. Can I pass this to you? Can you mix it for me? I can certainly. I'm going to get you so. involved in the kitchen. There we go. You can give that a mix. I'm going to start on the chicken. So I've got chicken breast, and we know it's notoriously dry the way that people cook it. Yes. Not a lot of fat in it, and that means it's a very lean piece of meat. So if you overcook it, it's going to go extremely dry. Look at you. You like that? Very well done, yeah. <laughs> so we want to try and cook the chicken as fast as we can. When we do that, we retain the moisture inside the chicken. How are we going to do that? We're actually going to butterfly the chicken. So it's going to create oh, okay. more surface area. So it's going to cook more of the chicken at once, are we using a griddle pan today? You don't have to use a griddle pan, you can use a normal pan at home. A grill pan's nice because it gives it that like, smoky texture to it. Okay, I got so you, cool. I got you. Guys, of course, if you are looking for some recipe inspiration, anything that's gonna assist you in the kitchen when it comes to health and wellness, check out our website, it's expressoshow.com. We've got lots of inspiration just like this that's gonna get you magazine ready indeed. But we are in the kitchen preparing a grilled chicken and veg with Chef Clem and it's in light of our day of health that we've got you on the show and I, for one, am definitely loving this. This is a familiar treat of mine which I'm trying to not make so bland and dry and Chef Clem has come to the rescue. <laughs> coming through, coming through with the flavors. Coming through. So what are you up to here, man? You're busy okay. uh, putting lemon on the chicken right now. A bit of lemon, lemon zest and the juice going in there. Yesterday we used the korma curry paste, today we're using the tikka curry paste. What's really cool about the tikka, it's got those charred flavors. If you think about tikka chicken in general, it's like mm. cooked in that tandoor oven. Yes, yes, you get yes, those smoky yes, yes. flavors. So I love kind of these like little convenient options. Oh, it's man. Flavors yeah. of all over the world that you don't have to spend the whole day yeah. like simmering and reducing. It's just done. It's I done, it's this. done, it's so good. So that goes into your chicken. What you're gonna do then, you're gonna give it a good mix. Kind of coat the chicken. I'm not using any excess oil, I don't need it, because there's a bit of like, um, the, the moisture of the lemon is enough for me to kind of get the flavor going on with yeah. the chicken. What you do wanna do is get it like nicely mixed through. Get that paste on there. Maybe just use your hands. Smother it. Yeah, get, the, get your hands on there. Pop that on the griddle. Ah. You could do it on the braai. I mean, it's totally cool. But yeah, the idea is that you don't need to add excess oil to this. There's enough flavor going on there. It's not gonna burn, it's not gonna go bitter. Three minutes aside, don't overcook it. Is don't it? overcook it. Yeah, remember, keep on cooking as you take it off the heat as well. Three minutes aside is all you need. You take that, chop it up, serve it with your salad, you're good to go. And it's done. You're done. I've Dinner's be, that easy. I, I need to decide now whether or not this is actually the, yep. the, the succulent chicken that I've mm -hmm. been craving because yeah. the dryness has just been killing me, man. <laughs> go for get, it. So while you're stacking down on that, I mean, it's important that we talk about, we, we, we talk about the daily difference every day and how much we actually save. Um, with filling a bag, that's your opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life. I mean, the QR code is on screen. All you have to do is scan it, make a donation. And what I'm doing now is all the money I actually save of buying of Daily Difference, because at the end of your till, when you make a per your payment, it tells you how much you saved. Mm -hmm. That's the money I actually don- donate back into fill a bag. Oh, wow. And it makes Smart, such yeah. a difference. It make, I mean, you're saving so much. And then I, what I've done is, like I said, is I'll take that money straight into fill a bag, and it makes such a huge difference in people's lives. So, Ryle. You're gonna be donating some money there? Oh, definitely, my friend. I'm okay. telling everybody at home, all of you are at home as well, get involved. I think this is an absolute incredible yeah. cause. Reward yourself, but at the same time, you're rewarding others with yeah. the benefits that you do get from it. So, absolutely. Check it out, guys. Nicole, <laughs> stop eating my vegetables. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back, all you beautiful people, right here to your Feel Good Breakfast Show on SABC3. Now, yesterday, a sea of black washed over our social media timelines as those who are frustrated and really disheartened by the state of police brutality in the United States followed the lead of those in the music and entertainment industry who declared yesterday as Blackout Tuesday. Now, to understand how we ended up here, let's take a look at a timeline of events that started last week, Monday. Yeah, so on the 25th of May, George Floyd, a 47 six-year-old black man died in Minneapolis, Minnesota after being handcuffed and pinned to the ground by Derek Chauvin, a white police officer. Now, video footage captured by bystanders shows Chauvin using his knee to pin Blo uh, Floyd by the neck for almost nine minutes while Floyd repeatedly said he couldn't breathe. Now, this became the driving force for protests that started in Minneapolis the next day, which quickly grew to other cities, including Los Angeles and Memphis. And back in Minneapolis, where they started, the peaceful protests began turning violent as fires and looting broke out, and cops attempted to disperse crowds with rubber bullets and tear gas. Now, by the 28th, the National Guard had been mobilized in Minnesota and various other states, uh, while Justice Department said that a federal investigation into Floyd's death was a top priority. And on the 29th, former officer Chauvin was arrested and charged with third-degree murder. Now, by this point, however, tensions have risen past the point of uh, prosecution to a greater discussion about social inequ uh, racial inequality rather, in America. And following further unrest and multiple arrests of protesters over the weekend, the music industry on Monday announced that it would be going silent and stopping business on Tuesday to call attention to protest efforts to reflect and to find ways to make a real change. And many others have followed suit asking or adding the hashtags blackout Tuesday and hashtag the show must be paused in a, a moment uh, the internet was just caught up in this gripping somber emotion and everything just kind of seemed to stop and halt um, in recognition of what is going on what is a very very important topic to be focusing on discussing and to find a resolution to where racism stops because it's just been so many many years decades centuries um and and people have just had enough and it's it's just we, we're caught up jamie lee in a very heavy situation right now and we've seen um, you know in the latest reports uh, about what is happening with protesters all around the united states and all this you know while um the late mr george floyd's family is is mourning the death of you know a provider a family man um, it must be incredibly difficult for them, and uh, this has just sparked uh, a very important conversation. Actually, absolutely. Our hearts are filled with so much, you know, it, I, I've just been an emotional wreck since last week, Monday, and just to see everyone yesterday stand in solidarity with this and using their platforms to educate and understand why this is happening and understand that this is a movement, and we all need to understand that black lives do matter. So. Continue having these conversations with yourself, but also not just on social media. Once that social media is gone, are you still using your platforms and understanding what is happening in and around the world? So yeah. yesterday, Blackout Tuesday was hectic, and let us continue having this conversation. Well, let's do that right now and gain a better understanding of the issues at hand. Uh, Tabiso is with Kaya Zanga. Thank you, guys. Yes, it's a very important conversation to have, one that must be backed up by action. It's not a black problem. It's a human problem. Hashtag Black Lives Matter is definitely uh, a, pr a program in an international human rights movement originating in the African-American community that has been in the spotlight. Now, the movement campaigns against violence and systematic racism towards the black community. While we have heard this phrase many a time, the recent cases of George Floyd and Collins Corsa have given many an opportunity to revisit the movement's importance and we're joined by best-selling author Kaya Langa to help us unpack the dialogue and its importance as we enter Youth Month. Kaya Langa, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, very well. Thanks, uh, uh, Kaya. As we enter Youth Month, we remember the youth of 1976 uh, who took to the streets. They marched against Afrikaans as the medium uh, language of instru instruction in their schools, and of course, hundreds of them losing their lives to police brutality. Uh, what does this particular movement today mean to you? Well, I mean, uh, I think it really symbolizes a sacrifice, and it symbolizes 
uh, the utter frustration that people have in order to achieve what they really feel, you know, that they are, when they feel their rights are infringed upon. And in the instance of, you know, the youth of 1976, they, um, it, 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 it's not like, it, it really demonstrates what people need to do in order to simply get heard sometimes. And, um, and it's often unfair and it makes no sense that people have to lose their lives to really just for humanity to do what's right. And that's, uh, I think when we look back today, it's ridiculous to think that people had to take to the streets and march and be shot at just so that they can say, we don't be taught in this language. Mm -hmm. And that's all they're asking for. And they're not asking for more than that. And 44 years later, Kaya, here we are, the news of, you know, the passing of George Floyd in the U.S. and, of course, closer to home, uh, the death of Collins Causa uh, that has, uh, you know, surfaced and sort of resurfaced those old feelings and emotions that have come through. Why are movements such as hashtag Black Lives Matter so necessary to have in today's environment? It's really to raise, you know, to shine a light on the plight of black people that, you know, they feel and experience. And it's, uh, you know, it is a global problem. It is not just, you know, it's not just an American problem where you think that, you know, there is uh, where black people are still feeling, are still feeling not part of what welcome in the society of America. And I think it's the same thing in South Africa where not just where we're a majority, um, it is also quite possible because the systematic injustices do not just, it's not just about, you know, the number of people you have. It's mm -hmm. really about economic power, social power. And, uh, and there's also, and because we've come to see that political power does not necessarily mean that you are able to make any other changes within the system. Mm -hmm. um, and what this symbolizes to me and what it really means to me is that we still have a long way to go. And it also really shows, not only do we have a long way to go, it's that once this generation is done with this fight, there'll be another generation that has to take up another fight. And, and for something that is as ridiculous as saying, guys, don't, sh just don't shoot me. You know, I'm, you know, I may be a suspect or you may, I may look like one, but just don't shoot me. There's no need for you to raise a gun and, and, and to feel that it is okay for you to treat the black body with violence. Yesterday, we saw the hashtag uh, Black Art Tuesday trending and dominating social media with supporters of the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement. Like yourself, uh, you refrained from posting any personal content on social media as an act of solidarity. Well, what was the purpose of this act? Yeah, it was really to show solidarity, I think, with, uh, you know, all oppressed people around the world, people of color, is to show that we are here with you. We see what you're going through, understand uh, what you know, what 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 you're going through, and um, sometimes that is really all you can do. And and, and you know, some people have I saw some people saying that well, you know, posting you know, uh, Black Out Tuesday is not going to change anything. Of course, it's not going to change anything. No, nobody says that like standing there and you know, and, and, and putting out the hashtag is going to change something. What changes things is what's happening on the ground. But what it also achieves, it really achieves the purpose of educating people who are not willing to be educated about the issue or people who have not even, who are not exposed to it or mm. didn't even try to learn anything about what is going on to the community. So there are multiple, there are multiple uh, aspects that, that really help, even though, at face value, it may look like so something that is really working out. It's really the importance of, you know, bringing forward that heightened awareness, because I think for a lot of people, uh, it's easy to think that you are not a racist just because you don't go around calling people the K word, for example, but there are many ways in which you could be racist. If you think in one way, any way that you are more superior as one race to the other, that is racism. Uh, and, and racism isn't, it, it, it isn't always so overt and always in your face and always in the words that people yell out as they drive uh, 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 you know on the streets or find themselves in altercations but uh, Kaya Langa, before we let you go you've got a book uh, that you're busy with at the moment yes these things really do happen to me tell us about that when is it out 
Oh, no, no, that book has been out for oh, some oh. time. It's well, <laughs> I haven't received a copy, Kaya. Have I received a copy? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's, been, it's been out for some time. Um, unfortunately, I, I mean, uh, and take a lot. I don't know, it's, just, it's out of stock. Mm. Which, uh, so I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, because yeah. a lot of people have been asking for it. Mm. And um, I, I suppose people could uh, go to... Maybe their local bookstore and try yeah. and get hold of the book. Uh, yeah. So it was a bestseller. So oh well, I this understand. this this I is understand why it's, it's selling out. Or why I don't have a copy. <laughs> I need to make sure that I get myself a copy. But thank you so much. I think your work that All you right, do, particularly you. in the the the, the, uh, the world of literature in this way, speaks to the fact that you know young South Africans or South Africans um, of color have the potential and the power to change things and to change the way that our lives uh, are portrayed and carried out out there. So thank you so much for all that you do, Kaitlanga. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. We'll see you after this. Find your smooth fortune with Tropica. Buy a Tropica, follow the entry details on the pack, and stand a chance to win your share of 1 million rand in prizes, such as data, airtime, cash, LG G8X smartphones, LG dishwashers, and guess vouchers, watches, and accessories. The more Tropica you buy, the more chances you have to win. T's and C's on tropica.co.za. Tropica, nothing smoother. You're still with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso right here on SABC3. Now, at the Expresso Show, showing our gratitude and appreciation to all of our loyal and loved viewers is of utmost importance. Uh, but of course, with the support of our viewers, we're able to do such great things. But without the support and viewership of our fans on all platforms, from TV to YouTube, uh, we're not able to do what we do as best as we can. So as national lockdown continues, we decided to check in with some of our devoted viewers, like... Uh, uh, route or Root Compliance Clark, uh, his long-standing YouTube viewer, Sipo Matlangu, who joins us via video call this morning. He is one of the Expresso Tubers. Sipo, good morning. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. Yo, how are you? How are you, Expresso Tubers? Ah, we're all good. Well, we're good this side. And a big shout-out, certainly, to the Expresso Tubers out there. Sipo, I see you out at work. Yes. How are you uh, coping and surviving during lockdown? How's work been during lockdown? Uh, I would say we've been working ever since the lockdown started. We, we part of the essential people, so we have to feed the people. I'm actually in the food sector. Ah. So we have to carry on making food for the people, and you guys have to eat also. Well, you know what? You are absolutely essential, and you're not making a mistake. We've got to eat. We've got to prepare food here on the show. So we salute you for going out there and keeping that uh, that going. Now, uh, Sipo, I mean, yeah. you, you, you are really one of my favorites because you're one of our long-standing Expresso viewers who watches the show on our YouTube channel every day. When did the show become a part of your morning routine? Um, it's been a long time before even you came into the show. Uh, uh, I can't even really think of the years before. But uh, before I started watching on the streaming service, I used to watch on the on normal SABC. And I used to see you and the Grams, uh, the, 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 you know, you know the team, everyone, the family. Yeah, that, you know how it is. Yeah. And me being here, like speaking to you guys, it's like yo. Ah oh, man. <laughs> Even now I'm a bit nervous. 
Oh, there's nothing to be nervous about. I mean, think of it this way. You are part of our family. As an espresso tuber, you really are an extension of our family. Uh, and so it's really just a conversation between, between two family members. But Sipo, uh, as a long-standing espresso tuber, do you have a favorite moment uh, from the show uh, that stands out for you? And why this particular moment? Stand out uh, every day. Because you cast every, everything different. Uh, there's the food, there's the in thing when you guys inform us about what's going on around the world. Yeah. Yeah, uh, basically everything you guys do is informing us. Yeah. Mara for you, Sipo, as Sipo Masango, if you have to think about that one time uh, of something that happened on the show that you will never forget, that you really liked, that you really enjoyed, what would it be? When you guys play games. Ah, what's your favorite <laughs> game? What's your favorite game? Because there's this uh, one you like playing, pulling out those uh, thing, sticks. Ah, Jenga. Okay, when we do with the cubitos. Yeah. Ah, that's one of my favorites too, only because we get to eat really, Sipo. Ah, Sipo Masangu, man, we really appreciate you uh, as one of our top espresso tubers, and we, we really uh, want to continue to celebrate you in this way for as long as you continue to celebrate us and that you tune in to your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thank you so much for your support, eh? Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, that was Sipo Masangu. Thank you, man, for taking the time uh, to chat to us this morning. And thank you for being a loyal viewer of the show. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. It's nice to be on the show also. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much for Fantastic. joining us. We see you all over tomorrow. Ciao, ciao, meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs>